In this new video series that I'm making, I'm gonna show you how you can build a simple tower defense game using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In particular, we're going to be using HTML Canvas as our drawing library so we can get graphics on the web page. So to follow along, you're going to need an HTML file, a JavaScript file, and a CSS file, all of which are blank. And you can create all of these just by renaming text documents and changing the file extensions. And I've gone ahead and I've already opened the HTML file using my browser, and you should have a blank web page like this. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and declare this to be an HTML document. So I'm going to type doc type HTML and I'm going to create the HTML tag. HTML followed by the closing HTML tag. So now I've created the HTML element. I'm going to go ahead and create the head element. And the head element is going to contain the title for our project on the web browser. So the title is just going to be tower defense. And then I'm going to close that element. Now I'm going to create the body element. So body, then slash body. And all we're going to put in the body of our web page is the canvas, which is what we draw on. So canvas. And before I close that tag, I'm going to give it an ID of canvas so that you can, so we can reference it in the JavaScript. I'm going to set the width to be 800 pixels and the height to be 800 pixels. Actually, the height will be 600 pixels. Now I'm going to close the canvas tag slash canvas. That's mostly it for the HTML file. We have a blank JavaScript file and a blank CSS file. But before we can use them, we need to link them to our HTML file here. So I'm going to start with the CSS. Inside the head element, I'm going to add link href equals the name of my file, style.css, and rel equals stylesheet. And I'm going to close that angle bracket. Now I'm going to link to my JavaScript. So below the canvas, I'm going to add script source equals the name of my file, code.js. And I'm going to close the script tag, slash script. Now let's make sure that all three of these files are working. In the CSS, I'm going to change the background color of the whole web page to be light gray. So background color will be light gray. And in my JavaScript, I'm just going to add a log statement, console.log game start. Now when I refresh, the screen got a little bit darker because the CSS is working. And if I click F12, we have game start in the console, which tells me my JavaScript is working. So now let's start actually working on the game. We're going to create a variable for the canvas, which is what we draw on. So var canvas equals document dot get element by ID. That's why we needed an ID. I'm going to add canvas in quotes. And now we're going to create the context variable, which is just the drawing tool that you get from the canvas. So context is equal to canvas.get context. You're going to open two parentheses and then type 2D and with a semicolon. So we got the canvas, which is what we draw on, and we got the context, which is our main drawing tool. Let's go ahead and create our background color. So var background BG color, which will be green since I want to do a bird's eye view tower defense game and the green's going to be the grass. So to set up our game, we're going to need to create the game loop. Every game has a game loop. It's just a series of updating and rendering. When your game updates, it means the data is changing. Like position data of players and AI is changing. Health is changing for the AI. Turrets are shooting, so ammo is being depleted. That's a change in data. That's updating. Rendering is when that change of data is displayed on your screen. So let's go ahead and create two functions that will update and render. So function update, and it's going to be blank for now. Same with the render function. That's also going to be blank. Now I'm going to create a play function, which is basically our game loop function. That's going to run both of them. So update 
and render. Now we want this play function to repeat itself over and over and over again for our game to run. So I'm going to use the set interval function to make play run at 60 frames per second. So I'm going to type play, which is the function we want to repeat. And 60 frames per second for the set interval function is going to be 1000 divided by 60. So now play will be happening repeatedly. And to make sure this works, let's go ahead and draw our canvas background color. Right now the canvas is blending in perfectly with the web page, but once we give it a background color of green, we'll be able to see it. So let's set the context as drawing color. Context.fill style equals background color. And now let's draw a rectangle over the entire screen. Context dot fill rect and I'm going to put inside of there zero zero and then we're gonna need the the screen width and the screen height and I'm gonna go ahead and create variables for those they're actually gonna be constants not variables so const screen width is equal to canvas dot width const screen height is canvas dot height so now we're going to fill a rectangle from 0, 0, and it's going to be the width of the screen and as tall as the screen. So now I'm going to refresh this, and the entire background is green. The next thing we're going to do is draw the, we're going to split this green screen here into a grid. Now, I don't really plan on making this tower defense game a tile based game, but I do want to split up the screen into a grid to make it easier for us to draw the path that the AI will go later. And it's going to serve a lot of other purposes. So that's going to look like this here. We're going to take our green screen and draw lines all throughout it. So I'm going to create a function in our code that's going to draw those lines. I'll put it above our render function, and I'm going to call it function render grid. Now the render grid function first has to set the drawing color to black since we want black lines. So context dot fill style equals black. And now I'm going to use a for loop to draw 32 vertical lines across the screen. I know it's 32 because that is the the width of the screen divided by my tile width. My tile width is going to be 25 pixels. So I'm going to create a for loop that runs 32 times for each vertical line. So for let i be 0, i is going to be less than the width of the screen divided by the tile width i++. Plus plus. So that's a for loop that runs 32 times. And we also need to set the starting x position. Since we're going to start from the far left and just draw a vertical line, move over a little bit, draw another vertical line, move over another vertical line. So the starting x position is going to be 0. But at the end of every repeat, we're going to add one tile width to that x. So x plus equals tile width. So in between, we're going to draw that line. To draw a line, you need to begin a new path. So context.begin path. Or in other words, you need to create a new drawing path. This is, by the way, something you only need to do when you're drawing lines or circles in, in Canvas. You don't need to do this with, with rectangles or images. So you begin the path. Then you say where the path starts. So context.move to. And we want this, the first vertical line to start at our x position and a y of 0. Now, where does it move to? Since now our context, our drawing rule, I mean our drawing tool, is right here at the position 0, 0. We want it to move to the position 0, 600. So context.line to x stays the same, but our y is now the screen height of 600. So those two functions specify where the line is, but now we need to draw the line. So context.stroke. And that will draw all our vertical lines, unless I've made a mistake. And it looks like I did make a Actually, I don't think I actually ran the render grid function. Yep, so in our render function, I need to now draw the grid. 
render grid. Now when I refresh this, I have all my vertical lines in place. Now let's draw the horizontal lines. So we're gonna have our starting Y position be zero and we're gonna start from top to bottom. And a quick note about canvas, this top left position is zero, zero. This top right is the position screen width zero or a hundred zero. The bottom right is screen width, screen height or 800, 600. And this position is 0, 600. So this is the same coordinate system that you're used to, except the Y axis is flipped. As you go down, the Y gets bigger. So that's something important to remember. So now let's draw all the horizontal lines. Four, let I be 0. How many lines do we want? Well, we want the height of the screen divided by the tile width. That's going to be how many horizontal lines. And then I plus plus. Now we're going to draw each line. So context.begin path to create the new path. Context.move to. We're going to start at our current. Well, our X is actually going to start all the way at 0 to the left. And we're going to start at Y. Now, where does the line move to? Well, I'm going to type the X is now going to be the screen width and the Y stays the same. So we're starting at an X of zero, which is the far left, and we're going all the way the whole width of the screen. So that's why I did zero screen width. So now let's draw the line context dot stroke. And now we need to increment Y each time. So Y plus equals the tile width. Oh, and don't make that mistake of doing tile height. I'm not creating a tile height variable because we're using squares and the width and height are the same. So now I'm going to refresh the screen and now we have our screen fully divided perfectly in little 25 by 25 pixel squares. So now, like I said, this game isn't actually going to be tile based or it might be, it might be. Maybe I'll have it to where turrets can only place on an actual tile in the game and you can't just place it wherever. But for now, this only serves the purpose of making it easier for us to identify positions. Now that we have the grid, we're going to go ahead and, and create the path which the AI are going to follow. To do that, we're going to need to create a vector class real quick. If you don't know what a vector is, don't worry about it. It's really just a set of coordinates, one coordinate. So class, vector, and if you don't know how to do classes. I have a video on that on my channel. I'm going to create a constructor which will take an X and a Y parameter and the vector will have one X position which will be set to whatever X we decide and the Y position set to whatever Y we decide. So when we do our path data we're going to have a series of displacements of how far up, down, left, or right the AI should go with each step of the path. So I'm going to create the path data var path data equals, and by the way, if you don't know what I mean by path data, this is what I mean. Let's say this is the path I want my AI to go. I want them to start right here, and I want them to go down all the way to here, and then I want them to from there go here. That's a path. We're going to set a path in our code for our AI to follow. So we're going to have two displacements like that. So the path data is going to be a list of two vectors. New vector. The first one, we just go down. So the Y won't, I mean, the X won't change. And the Y will go down by, say, 200 pixels. For the second displacement, we are going to go to the right. So the X is going to change by 200 pixels and the Y will not change at all. By the way, once our game is actually done, we're going to have way more paths than this, but we're going to keep it simple because we're about to draw roads to go around the paths. By the way, notice that these aren't actual coordinates. Our, our starting position is actually going to be the position 100, 0, and these are simply displacements that we're going to add to that starting position. So we're not going to tell the AI to go from 0 to 100 to 200 0. 
but we are going to add these vectors to our starting position. That's the path that AI are going to take. So the starting position is going to be the vector of 100, 0, which is this position right here. 1, 2, 3, 4 tiles, 0. So that's where our path is going to start. So let me close that with a semicolon. So now we have our basic path that our AI are going to follow to reach our tower. And we have the starting position, which that path is based off of. Now we're going to, I'm going to end the video with drawing roads to go around that path. Here's what I mean. Our AI, once we do AI, which unfortunately won't be in this video, the AI are just going to be these circles. And the circles are going to follow the path center. We're going to design roads to go around the path so that no matter where the AI is on the path, he's always on a road. So we're going to draw a rectangle that is going to go on either side of the path like this. And by the way, even though this part of the grass is not technically a part of the path, we're going to cover it anyways so that once the AI reaches that point, once he gets down here and starts moving to the right, there's still a little bit of extra space here so that he's not halfway hanging off the grass like that. So now we're going to go ahead and create a function that draws this rectangle that I just created, this rectangle right here that wrapped around the path perfectly. So let's go ahead and create that function. I'm going to put it above the render grid function. I'm going to call it render path. And again, this is also not really essential for the gameplay, but it will look nicer if we can see exactly the road that the AI are following. And by the way, before I forget, I'm going to call the render path function from our main game render right here, just so that I don't forget it. All right, so for the render path, to know exactly where each one of these rectangles are that we need to draw over the path, we need to know where we start drawing. So I'm gonna set the first drawing position let the draw position be equal to the starting position. So new vector start position dot x start position dot y. So our drawing position is going to be set to the same as the start position. This is where we're going to start drawing the rectangle. So now let's create a for each loop, which is going to go through each displacement in the path. I lost my function for a second. So path data dot for each. This is just like a for loop, but it works specially for li for lists like this one. So I'm going to type function with two curly brackets. I'm going to click enter and end that with a semicolon. And inside the parameters, I'm going to add path. This is going to be a variable that represents each individual path in the list. So now let's start with drawing the vertical roads, this first part of the path. So if the path x is 0, that means we're not changing in the x position at all. That means we're drawing a vertical path. So here's what we're going to draw. We're going to draw a rectangle that actually starts here and moves down here. So notice there is extra space. We've added extra space of two tiles above and two tiles below. And again, that just serves the purpose of making sure that the AI are always on the road and never touching the grass, which I guess wouldn't do any harm, but I want it to look nice. So we're actually going to draw a rectangle from here to here. So what is this coordinate? Well, the X of that is going to be, let that X position be our drawing position dot x minus the width of the tile. So if our drawing x is here, we're going to go over one tile. The y position of the top left corner is the drawing position dot y also minus a tile. So that is up one. So we started from here and we went to here. Now what is this right here? Well, actually, we just need to create the width and height for the rectangle to get this position. So how wide is our rectangle going to be? Well, that's easy. The, our rectangle is only going to be two tiles wide. So let the width be 
tile width times two. And how tall will our path be? Well, it's our, our road, our rectangle is gonna be as tall as the path plus a extra tile width plus an extra tile width. And I realized I didn't draw the rectangle correctly. If the red is the path, then our rectangle is actually going to be like this. So there's if the red path ends here, we have one extra set of tiles below, one extra set of tiles above. I accidentally had two below. So the height of that rectangle that we're going to draw over the path is going to be the path dot y plus two tiles, one above and one below. So now that we have the dimensions of that rectangle, we can draw the rectangle. So context dot fill rect x, y, width, and height. But by the way, we can't actually draw the rectangle yet until we set the color. So context dot fill style equals gray, like that. And now before I forget, and if we if we refresh this, this should actually draw our first path on the screen. And no, it didn't. So let me actually find that error first. All right, my error was pretty simple. So I'm using a start position variable to set where our, we first start drawing. But up here, I accidentally called it star pos. So it's start position. So just refresh that. And now we'll see that that rectangle perfectly drew around where our path was. So now we can draw vertical paths. Let's go ahead and draw this horizontal path next. So now I'm gonna add the else statement for when our path is a horizontal path. And we know it's horizontal when the x is not equal to zero. So now we're gonna draw the horizontal path. That is going to be, if this is where the path starts, we're going to start the rectangle here and end it here. That leaves two extra tiles of space here and two extra tiles of space here. So the rectangle will look like this. So let's calculate what that rectangle is. Well, the X position and Y position are actually the exact same. It's just where our draw position dot X minus one tile. And then the Y position is the draw position dot Y minus one tile. Now the width of this rectangle is going to be the path dot X, which in this case is 200. The path X plus two tiles, the ones on either side that I showed you. And the height of this rectangle is just two tiles, as you can see in my picture. So the height is tile width times two. Now we're gonna draw that one, context dot fill rect x, y, width, height. Now, actually, I forgot some part of my code because when I refreshed this, it actually started drawing the next piece from the same start position. So we'd never actually modified the draw position to start from here. So what we need to make sure we do is after we draw each part of the path, we need to set the draw position to where we ended. In other words, if I started drawing here, and ended here, well, I need to set the new draw start position right here for the next path. So I'm just gonna add the path to the draw position. Draw position.x plus equals path.x, draw position.y plus equals path.y. Now when I refresh, it should actually move the path in the correct spot, and it does. So now let's make sure it's a correct height this path should go down by 200 and to the right by 200. So we got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four tiles down. And by the way, it goes an, down an extra tile, but that's just extra padding that we added. And it should go an extra eight tiles to the right. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It went nine tiles to the right, but again, that's the extra space. So now our path drawing system works perfectly. This function is gonna be very useful for us because now, without even changing the function, we can change the path data to be more like what our game will be. So that's why I kept it simple at first. This, 
this is a pretty lame tower defense right here if the AI start here and they end here. So let's make it a little bit better. Let's have them move maybe by 500 for that second part. Make it 550, so two extra tiles. And now from here, let's make them go down, hmm, I don't know, let's make them go down 300. So I'm going to add another displacement. They're going to go down 300, actually, sorry, X stays the same, but they go down 300, so we just change the Y. And that's good enough for me. Actually, that's a little low. So let's make it 250. And now we're going to draw from here to about over here. And our tower to defend will be over here, which we're going to handle in the next video. So here to here, that's going to be the vector, new vector. We're going to go to the left. So I'm going to put a negative 400 and the Y stays the same. And when I refresh that, it's a little shy. Let's go ahead and make it a negative 500. Save that. Refresh. And that is good enough for me. So now we've gone ahead and we've created our startup for our tower defense. We have our grid, our tile grid drawing. This makes it easier for us to see exactly where things in our game are going to go. And now we have a good rendering system for drawing the path that the AI are going to be on. That's going to be the end of part one for my Tower Defense JavaScript series. Thank you very much for watching.